Today's video is sponsored by GVG Mall, where you can get a Windows 10 serial key for only $17. And by using my discount code, you get a 20% off discount, making it even less $14. After the payment, you'll receive the serial key, and to activate it, just go to your Windows settings and introduce that same key. And voila! You have an activated system for only $14. Hello guys, this is Gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco, and welcome to my channel. Today's video is hopefully with a better image, since I upgraded my S8 to my S20, and now we have 4K 60fps, hopefully with a better image, like I said. Today's video is about RAM capacity. How much RAM do you need for gaming in 2020? This video features 4 GB single channel, so one stick of 4 GB, 8 GB dual channel, two sticks of 4, 12 GB, one stick of 8 and one stick of 4, 16 GB, two sticks of 8, and 24 GB, so two sticks of 8 plus two sticks of 4. Now some important things for you to know, so all the RAMs, being it single channel, dual channel, uh, being it two sticks or four sticks or even three sticks, which isn't even tested in this video, but whatever, all the tests I've done were using the same timings and sub timings, so I did go into the BIOS and I forced the timings and sub timings, okay? This of course to prevent variations due to the sub timings, that can also matter a lot in some scenarios. Also, take in consideration that I have an NVMe SSD for my system, so for the Windows, um, 240 gigabytes NVMe, and that is what manages the Windows uh, page file, so the Windows page file. For you guys that don't know what the page file is, basically, um, the Windows will load into RAM the things you are running, for example, but once you go short of RAM, so once you have no RAM, Windows will send back the files to the drive. In this case, since you have the, the Windows drive, they will use the page file of the NV NVMe um, SSD drive. So, if you have an SSD or an NVMe drive, in scenarios where you don't have that much RAM, that will matter. Also, the CPU used is the Ryzen 5 3600 and the GPU used is the RX 5700 XT with 8GB of VRAM, which also helps. And well guys, without any further delays, don't forget to hit like, subscribe and share this video because that really helps a lot. And well, let's now go to the part you really want to see, the tests. See you in the conclusion. Are you an idiot? Stop that! The first game of today is Assassin's Creed Odyssey with the inbuilt benchmark tool. As can be seen, even the 4GB single channel can run this game. If, of course, you have a good SSD in order for the Windows to maximize the effectiveness of the page file, and a GPU with around 8GB of VRAM. But well, 8GB are still decent overall, and while the results are a bit messy, we shall look at 1080p results for more reliability. 24GB is indeed a bit faster than 16GB, and that is due to having 4 sticks instead of 2 sticks of RAM. Still, the difference is minimal, and as for 12GB of RAM, we have low results at 1080p and 4K, not due to the RAM not being enough, but mostly due to the fact that we're using different RAM, in size and chip. But well, that will be explained in the end of the benchmarks. The
The second game is Need for Speed Heat. This game shows us good data. For example, 4GB of RAM were obviously demolished by this game, even having an NVMe SSD for page file, and the game wouldn't even run at 4K with only 4GB of RAM. As for the remaining results, we are once again seeing 8GB of RAM being better than 12GB, with mixed RAM sticks. The results are a bit different at 4K, but really close, and that may be due to the game weather changing here and there. Overall, anything over 8GB with equal RAM sticks is fine. Now with The Division 2, using the X12. I wanted to test this game since I knew it could easily reach around 10GB of RAM usage, and even that way we see once again the same results. 4GB ever on the same average FPS, but have way lower 1% lows, meaning that the game will stutter a lot, and 12GB being once again slower than 8, 16 and 24GB. It seems the memory controller doesn't like too much when you mix RAM sticks with different memory dies, but well, at least now we know. Now we have a new game tested, Battlefield 5. I know this game is mostly played online, but it wouldn't bring relevant results since the variations of the gameplay are huge, so I did a small running around test in the first mission just for a simple comparison. Well, once again we see the same. 4GB is not enough, nothing new since 2011, but well, and 12GB results being around the others in terms of average FPS, but way lower in terms of 1% lows. At 1080p, for example, we have a difference of around 15 FPS in the 1% lows, which means that the gameplay will be way less smoother than with 8GB of RAM, for example. Funny, huh? Now with the beloved Red Dead Redemption 2 running custom settings with Vulkan API. This was faster to test since with 4GB of RAM the game wouldn't even launch. <laughs> this game also uses from 8 to 10GB of RAM and runs with the Vulkan API, so it is an interesting test to see. This game seems to be even more sensitive to different RAM sticks, and this cannot be only seen by the 12GB results being way lower at 1080p, as seen in other games before, but by seeing that 24GB results are lower across all resolutions. So while in other games 24GB results are the best overall, this time we have 8 and 16GB results being the alpha dogs due to being just one equal RAM kit. Moving on. Now with another gameplay side at test with Metro Exodus. This game surprised me in many ways, apart from being extremely polished in terms of story and gameplay and graphics, it is also very well optimized. I run at native 3440 per 1440 and I can tell you that I have never seen this game using more than 7GB of RAM, even at that resolution, and it usually sits around 5GB. That is why 4GB kit can still produce decent results without a stupid amount of stuttering. And for other results, well, 
they are all within the margin of error and anything over 8 GB will be more than enough for this game. Now, 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 with Forza Horizon 4, and once again, holy shit, <laughs> we've seen before in the video I previously made about the core count, that Forza Horizon 4 didn't give a single shit about core count, and would run completely fine with 4 cores for threads, and now we see exactly the same things in terms, the same thing, sorry, in terms of RAM. The game can run almost perfectly with only 4GB of RAM. It will have a stutter here and there, but it will run. Of course, this to work you need, for example, an SSD with Windows installed in order to take advantage of the page file, and a GPU with more than 4GB of VRAM will also help. Still, it will run. Overall, Forza Horizon 4 also doesn't give a shit about RAM capacity, and even 8GB will be more than enough. The last game tested today is also a new addition to the tests, and it is Borderlands 3. I wanted to test this game since it can easily use up to 14 GB of RAM, 14 GB of RAM, and that can be seen in the results. With 4 GB of RAM the game wouldn't even launch and would present a black screen. The minimal for max performance is indeed 16 GB of RAM. And while 8GB of RAM seem to be enough at 1440p due to the GPU bottleneck, once we raise the resolution to 4K the RAM demand gets higher, and 8GB result drop to lower 40s, which is not acceptable, at least for me. Overall, if you want to play Borderlands, get 16GB or more. Let's go to the conclusion. So, concluding guys we've got some really interesting results. Well, like I said before, it seems that at least the Ryzen IMCs, at least my Ryzen 5 3600 I IMC, uh, the memory controller, doesn't like that much when you, when you mix IC, so when you mix uh, different RAM types. For example, um, in the 16GB um, kit, I have a Samsung Vidai, and on the 8GB um, kit, so 4 plus 4, I have a Hynix die, and it seems that the memory controller doesn't like when you mix dies. Why? Well, let's see this. These are the results from Ada64, and as you can see, using different ICs, so different memory chips, will in fact affect, for example, the latency, the memory reading, copy and writing. That's why the usual performance is lower with 12 gigabytes than 8 gigabytes. That's why, because we are mixing different RAM chips, and the memory controller doesn't like that at all. Even using the same timings and sub-timings, the results will be different. Interesting, huh? And well, how much RAM do you need for gaming in 2020? Okay, that's easy. For me, it's 16 gigabytes of RAM. So 16 gigabytes of RAM are now really, really damn cheap. So we are buying them at under $100. So it is pretty cheap and it doesn't really make sense to use under 16 gigabytes. It doesn't really make sense unless you have a really, really tight budget. But in that case, it also depends. Because for example, if you are using um, 8 gigabytes of RAM but with only uh, an HDD instead of an SSD, not an SSD for the games per se, but an SSD for the system for the page file, like I said in the beginning of the video. If you have, for example, an, an HDD, and for example, if you have only a 4 gigabytes, uh, 4 gigabytes VRAM card um, GPU, that will affect also the performance. So if you have lower VRAM, you'll need a bit higher RAM amount. In the other hand, if you have only a 4 gigabytes VRAM GPU, you probably won't need that much RAM since the bottleneck will be the GPU. So it is kind of a trade, but in general, 16 gigabytes is what you want for now. You can use 8 gigabytes completely fine if you have an NVMe SSD, for example, for the system and page file, and if you have an 8 gigabytes VRAM GPU, okay? 
even with 8 gigabytes you'll have you'll have indeed a stutter here and there when loading phases of the um, of for example open world games but that's nothing out of this world so yeah but well we've seen the results for gaming but if you are into gaming but also for example rendering and coding then you really really want more RAM so get the max you can at least 3200 <laughs> 32 gigabytes okay 24 gigabytes will be way better than 16 gigabytes in this scenario but if you can get more get more because for example I myself like to play while rendering and more RAM will indeed help in that like more cores of a CPU for example if you have 16 threads you may put 8 threads to the game and the other 8 threads for rendering and you can select for example 16 gigabytes of RAM for the game and the other 16 gigabytes for the um, for the rendering just an example so um, that may really help in some specific scenarios but for gaming 16 gigabytes is indeed the sweet spot also don't forget try to not to not mix different RAM kits or different RAM sticks because that may have a decrease in the performance and when you buy another RAM stick you actually want a performance boost, a performance uplift, not the contrary. So yeah, if you want the max you can get, get a kit. Do not buy single RAM sticks and mix them, do not do that if possible, just get both with a kit. Okay, <laughs> I keep being repetitive, but I really want that to enter your mind because some people will do that and some people are doing that still. And well, guys, hope this video really helped you in some way. If it did, don't forget hit like, subscribe and share it because that really helps a lot. Leave a comment in the comment section and let me know what you think about this video and these tests. And well, see you in the next one, guys.